Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a Socket 1366 based Intel Core i7-950. We tested it the other day as part of a cheap second-hand pre-built PC that I purchased online and found that it was somewhat limited by the Nvidia 600 series graphics card it was paired with. For this video I've swapped out the aging 660 Ti for an RTX 2080 Super and replaced the 8 gigs of dual channel memory with 24 gigs of triple channel DDR3 instead. The Gigabyte X58 board and huge scythe cooler that came with the PC allowed me to hit a near 3.8 GHz overclock without any stability or heat issues and that's the speed we'll stick with today. The high end graphics card will allow our i7 to really stretch its legs and hopefully we can hit some playable frame rate numbers in modern games. As far as multi-threaded CPU performance goes, I found that the i7-950 at 3.744 GHz sits between a 3rd gen i5-3550 and an i7-3770. It's still snappy and responsive under Windows 10 and from a daily usage perspective, I can't fault it. That said, it's fair to say that older quad-core processors can really struggle in games these days. Unfortunately, this CPU is no exception. It's hard to associate the i7 name with anything other than top-notch performance, and I, like many others I'm sure, am guilty of not wanting to believe that this once high-end offering could possibly struggle. The i7-950 will be 13 years old during this year of heartbreak. First, I have to recommend not buying the GTX 750 Ti, and now I have to dissuade you from purchasing one of these. Okay, so the 950 will struggle where you'd expect it to. I knew going into Battlefield 2042, for example, here that the frame times wouldn't be pretty. No amount of RAM or overclocking can make up for the fact that these old cores are tired. There are actually a few 6-core variants of these first-gen chips, starting with the i7-970, so I'll have to try and get my hands on one of those, or better, for a future video. 1366 socket Xeons are also worth looking out for as well. Some of those 6-core chips can be found for very little money. For now though, let's soldier on with our aging quad-core legend. Cyberpunk 2077 offers up surprisingly decent performance outside of busier areas that is. While downtown Night City caused some hefty frame rate dips even with the crowd density option decreased, the badlands and zones that were just away from people and traffic didn't often trouble the i7, with a 60 FPS plus average being quite easily attainable. As I mentioned, the inner city areas brought the overall performance metrics down, but you could play Cyberpunk with a first gen i7 if you had to. It's not consistently enjoyable, but it is playable. MSI Afterburner didn't show particularly high CPU usage for the i7 in Elden Ring, but the game didn't really run very well at all. Perhaps it's the CPU architecture it doesn't like. Neither the processor or graphics card were maxing out here, but the average and percentile figures were pretty poor overall. The game is playable, if like me you don't mind 30fps, but it didn't run how I expected it to. I thought it would do a bit better, but then again, this is a near 13 year old CPU. The i7 did quite well in Far Cry 6 though. We couldn't hit a 60 FPS average with settings that would otherwise allow this using the 2080 Super and a more modern CPU, but things weren't too bad. I took a stroll around the starting island because I haven't actually progressed any further in the game, and while causing some carnage, wiping out some guards, and basically doing the usual, the frame rate stayed fairly solid. There were one or two dips here and there, but nothing too major. I'm not sure what the max safe temperatures are for this processor. I think it's somewhere around 67 degrees, but I'm happy to report that with this bulky cooler on top of it, the 950 doesn't exceed 60 degrees. Let's say it rarely exceeds 60 degrees, actually. I didn't notice it go above 60, but it may have done over the past couple of days when testing. As I made my way around the Oasis race course in Forza Horizon 5, I thought to myself, wow, this chip is doing really well. Then I hit the brow of this hill and half of Mexico was missing. I've noticed this lately with older CPUs as well as ones with a lower core count. I don't know if this has always occurred or whether it's something I'm doing or not doing, but I'll have to investigate a bit. This doesn't happen with my 4 core i3-12-300 so I'm assuming it's the low core count combined with the age of the i7 causing this. It actually went away after a couple of minutes which was nice because the game was running quite well with a decent average and okay 1.1% lows. 
Halo Infinite didn't really care about the age of the CPU, it ran really well with at least 60 frames per second, and if I didn't know I was using a first gen i7, nothing about the performance would have given it away. The FPS held steady during my big team battle, however there were a couple of visible micro stutters here and there which usually happened when I got wiped out by an enemy player, but that's not really anything out of the ordinary. My advice thus far if you want to put together a socket 1366 Intel machine would be to look out for a 6 core chip instead or a low cost Xeon as I mentioned before because they can be found for less money than these i7s in both their 4 and 6 core variants. That said don't mistake this advice for a recommendation not until you've watched a few videos regarding ancient Xeon performance in 2022. I'll be testing one myself again at some point soon to see if they can still game. Finally then let's end this one with Red Dead Redemption 2. The i7-950 handles this just fine and I'm always glad to see it running well on older hardware because it is one of my favourite games. You could play this through plenty of times and still discover something you've never noticed before. It's certainly stolen a few weeks from me in the past. With console equivalent settings you can expect a solid frame rate with dips in the usual places such as busy towns. Exploring the open plains won't give you any grief with a near constant plus 60 FPS though. To conclude, Intel's early enthusiast platform is probably best enjoyed with a more powerful processor and one that has more cores. It's more of an enthusiast socket these days in a different way to how it used to be. You'd probably only want to build a first gen quad core i7 rig on the 1366 platform for the sake of nostalgia or because you enjoy the older hardware itself because from a performance and compatibility standpoint a newer platform certainly makes more sense. Still we'll have to see what a 6 core chip or Xeon can do in 2022 at some point in the near future. As for this one then, thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you still use one of these chips down below, a first generation Core i7 or any early Intel chip because it's always nice to hear that these old chips are still being used on a daily basis. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.